Hello everyone, I am Rod and I am the Game Design Instructor for the Academy of Entertainment Arts over at Dixie Hollins High School. If you are one of my students, it's Mr. Flowers to you, and welcome to this video tutorial. And we're back! See, that wasn't too hard. <clears throat> As promised, I went ahead and did these off screen, and everything's pretty much ready to go onto this shell. I just want to arrange everything. But I want to arrange this in a way to where we have as much UV space as possible for the entire body. So let's try to fit this. Typically what we do is we mirror each of these pieces. They kind of fit together. Like the hands kind of opposite to opposite. We kind of wedge them in between the legs and the arms. We kind of did that with here. And the body, we can do that as well. So I'm going to grab one of these. And it really depends on how they're going to fit together on this shell. So I'm going to body here. Um, my legs and my arms look like they'll go right next to each other pretty evenly. Hands probably go like that. <clears throat> feet. Let's see how these distribute on the shell. Now I could go up to the layout tool, polygons, and just hit layout, and Maya will automatically lay this stuff out for me. Just like that. Now if you don't like the way this is laid out, you can always do it yourself. So like I did here, I have this laid out the way that I want, and I can just scale this down and fit it into my shell. So it comes down to tweaking and moving things where you need them to go. Let's see if I rotate that. So I'll have to shrink this down just a little bit more. And it looks like I might be able to fit everything onto the shell here. So I'll put the body as close to the edges that I can. And if I flip this, I might actually be able to wedge this in just a tad more. Now flipping it on the panel doesn't really matter. It doesn't change the UVs in any real way. What it will do is it just makes it easier to space these out. So hand. All right, and this should be the arm set up, and this is the leg. I will kind of enlarge this leg.
And from here, I pretty much maximize my, my UV space and my layout. You could pick and choose and make uh, some areas larger or smaller for whichever. But the spacing looks fairly even. The way to kind of test this, you could throw on your checkered map and see how well everything lines up. All right, I'm going to throw on the checkered map now. So I'm going to hit this is Lambert here. And I prefer using Lambert's when I'm in Maya. You, if you've seen my videos or if you're part of the class, you know I like throwing on Lambert's. And the reason for that is it's just a very flat shader in this case. And I don't have to worry about reflections being in the way. So it's just really easy to look at. So I'll call this checker map. Maya does have a built-in checker map. I don't like using it because uh, the edges are a little bit weird. So I will load in a custom one from my uh, game design folder here. And I'll grab my character and I'll hit the mapped button. And you can see how it's laid out. I'm going to go to this little arrow. So this is in our material attributes here. I'm going to hit the arrow and then I'm going to go to place 2D texture. And I'm going to go down to repeat U and V. I'm going to do 3 and 3. And all we're looking at here to see if we have a decent layout is that the checker is evenly distributed around the body. So the spacing, I'm not too concerned with uh, the orientation of the checkered map. All I'm concerned with is the size of each checkered square is pretty even relative to the rest of the body. So from this square to this square looks about right. Same thing here. These look pretty close. Um, down here, it's a little bit different. You can see that this leg kind of gets cut off there. But this one is about the size of that one. This is getting cut off just because it's on the edge of the UV. If we look at the shell, I'll just go to the uh, body. Dim that. Uh, it's so hard to look at. It makes my eyes hurt. But if you look at the UV shell, this is the leg. It's the bottom of this leg. It just cuts over. So the, distri the distribution of this is probably fine. We're just losing some of that information here because we only cut halfway into that checker. But the size of it looks like it's correct. Same thing for the feet, hands, and then we have our face. Our face just isn't showing up just because we have it on a separate shell. That has to do with Maya being kind of silly. It only Maya will only display a texture to one UV set, and we have three UV sets. So what we have to do is modify our relationships between the current UV set that we're on and the texture that we're trying to show. So if I select my model, um, I go up to Window, and I go down to Relationship Editor, and then go down to UV Linking. You have a few choices. You have uh, texture-centric, UV-centric, uh, painting effects, and hair. Um, texture-centric means that it's the texture information related to whatever, and then UV-centric is it's UV information related to whatever. So I'm going to hit UV-centric. And you can see in the relationship editor, my UVs are my primary, and then my textures are my secondary. So I have my, my character here. There's a big drop down. Um, and I have three UV sets. Map 1 is currently, if I click on it, you see how it's highlighting this? So map 1 is going to file 6. Well, file 6, in my case, is my checker map. That's what my checker map is assigned to. If I go down to face, you see that there's no assignment. So if I select File 6, Maya will switch between the body to the face, and you can see the, distribu the distribution over the face. And the face looks pretty even all around. Um, you can see the hairline, how it's kind of slicing, but the, the squares are roughly the same size as the squares here. And that is what we're looking for. If you have too much of a uh, of a difference, you can always resize your UVs. So, for example, let's say I wanted these checkers to be the same size as these checkers if I wanted them to be perfect. 
I can go into my UV editor here and you can see that the back of the head is not quite the same size as the front of the head. So I can grab those and ugh, the ch this is atrocious to look at. I'm going to turn off the texture. So image display, turn that off. Ah, a little bit better. And I can grab this and then I can scale this up and you can see that by doing so, I can change the size of the texture. Or I can scale this down or whichever. And you can see that. And now they're closer to whatever their sizes are. So there's that. I'm going to reset my relationship editor. So I'm going to close this. In my relationship editor, I will go back to map one and I will reassign map one to my color six. And there we go. And all right, I'm going to go ahead and turn my texture off. And we will go ahead and begin working on our light map. Where'd my UV editor go? There it is. There's my shell. And then if I right click, go down to UV sets, I have my head, and then I have the body. Now we do need to create one for light maps. I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to go to polygons, I'm going to go to copy UV sets to new UV set, I'm going to call this light map. And I'll hit apply. Now close. So now if I right click and I go down to UV sets, stop you. I have map one, which is this. I have my face, which is just this. And then I have my light map, which is also this. But I'm going to add my face to this. So I'm going to right click and I go down to stop being a pain. Uh, my face map. I'm going to select my faces. Polygons. I'm going to go to copy UVs to set. And I'm going to copy it to my light map set. Hit OK. Now my UVs are stacked on here just fine. Um, but you can see they're overlapping. Ah! Don't be a pain. I'm just going to go ahead and grab all these. And I will use Maya's layout tool. Just lay everything out. Now when you're setting up a light map uh, set for UVs, I'm going to go ahead and turn this texture off. So whenever you're setting up you know, light maps, you just want to make sure that you have spacing in between. Usually uh, one grid space is good for spacing. I'm just going to try to organize these so they're a little wherever. Now the reason we're doing this, whenever you create a character or an object or anything to be placed in a game engine, light is generated... Sorry, light is not generated um, dynamically. That costs way too much in resources. So what they do to save on all that processing power is they bake all the shadow information into a light map uh, texture. And that gets applied to whatever object it is. Now for objects that are going to be dynamic, like a character or a door that might open or a window or a car, those don't usually get a light map baked, but they still use uh, a light map UV to redistribute the shadows across the surface. So for shadows to appear accurately across the model, you're going to want to have everything set up on a light map. So I'm just laying these out as straight as I can with some even spacing.
And I'm going to be OCD and get my hands. I think if I rotate this one, I can probably fit the other hand on here. I'm going to scale these down just because the resolution on the shadow is going to be pretty evenly distributed across the entire body. So the more even that I have these, the better the shadow will look. Now as far as positioning, uh, I'm just making it easier on my eyes to identify things, but position doesn't really matter so long as there's enough space between each object for the light to have a little bit of bleed. And what that means is as Unreal goes to generate a light map, it's going to read the UVs and it's going to give it, um, Think of it as coloring outside the lines. It's going to go to the edge of the UVs and it's going to create a soft kind of spread on the edges to give a more natural look. And if you have these overlapping, you end up getting bleed onto you know, this object's shadow um, being baked onto this object. And we don't want that. So that's why we're just spacing this stuff out to make sure that we have plenty of room for Unreal to generate all of the shadows. Again, this is going to be a character, so it's going to be moving around. It's going to be dynamic, so lighting will be updated in real time, unlike static things that get baked. But we still want to have this kind of evened out. And that'll work for my light map. Um, I just gave some even spacing, roughly in between all this stuff. And that's, that's it. So we have three shells. We have our first shell, which is our body. So it's just our body. And then we can paint on this in Mudbox or in Photoshop or whichever. Same thing for the face. We have maximized UV space for our face. And then we have our light map set so that we can generate shadows in Unreal or in whatever game engine you're going to be using. Alright, go ahead and save it and I will see you next time.